and your recent brilliant book about like the shaming like that like i suppose is that because we are starting to understand the true necessarily the true but an aspect of social media culture and like because mm-hmm. what is the gravity of that if it starts off as something that we're all sort of friendly and it's kind of cozy i remember a friend of mine saying god it started off like it was like if it was a physical space if it was a nice pub that you went there and then you went there one day and it was full of assholes <laughs> being horrible to you just would stop going to that yeah. pub you know. Exactly. I remember at the time a couple of people, um, Graham Linehan and Rebecca Watson, uh, who's a, a, um, a, a American podcaster, um, they both said to me, God, there's this, there's this new thing that you've got to join. It's called Twitter. It's like people are so nice to each other on it. It's like the rest of the internet may be like a kind of, you know, like... I remember Graham Linden said to me, like, if the, if the rest of the internet is black magic, Twitter's white magic, oh. in, meaning, you know, it's a place for people to be unselfconscious and to, um, you know, share their shameful secrets. And then, of course, that mutated into the hunt being on for shameful secrets. It's very, you know, it's very Animal Farm, the way that the the utopia became dystopian. What do you, having done the work that you've done and the sort of studies of popular cases that you have undertaken, what do you think it indicates? Well, I I think we felt, I mean, I, I think we, the problem is that we fell in love with our new weapon too much. So it became a place where people could be very unselfconscious, level playing field, ethical, it was a utopia. And then when somebody transgressed on the outside, like if some terrible Daily Mail columnist wrote something awful, we could hit them with a weapon that we understood and they didn't, which was a social media shaming. And so we suddenly found that we had power. Voiceless people had a voice and powerless people had power. And it felt great. So we would attack... I remember the LA Fitness, the gym, refused to cancel the membership of a heavily pregnant woman. So we just went for them and they immediately cancelled their membership. And that just kept happening all the time. But then what happened was that we fell in love with her we fell in love with our new power too much and a, and a day without a shaming felt like a day kind of treading water and so we so the parameters of what we considered shameworthy grew wider and wider and it was no longer actual bad things <laughs> it was just somebody said something that came out slightly wrong <laughs> and and then as a result of that what happened and what is still happening is that instead of seeing humans the way that we ought to which is a complicated mess of positive and negative character traits uh, it's a stage for constant artificial high drama where everybody's either like a hero or a villain. And Brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah, that is what it is. Yeah. So the appetite exceeded its function. Initially, there was like, hey, we can use this now to stop people being shy. But that eventually, went, no, we like doing this. And that is if you were to, if you weren't aware of that story and you were able to enter into a social media space now what you experience is bloody hell, what's this mad appetite <laughs> to do something? And you can, and that's the sort of, as an organism, that's how it's evolved in that direction from the yes. beginning of, oh, this is good, we can do this. And now it's like, yeah, but let's frenziedly do it. But yeah. that in itself doesn't, what does that imply? I think it implies, you know what it implies? It implies that we also come to psychological biases because we, when we shame somebody, we're doing the thing that we are most terrified would happen to us. Ooh, that's awful. Yeah. And we, and we, also we know we know that people are a complicated mix. I mean, other than, you know, high scoring psychopaths or unbelievably heroic people, most people aren't either of those extremes. Most people are, are a complicated grey area. So we know that, but we have to pretend to ourselves that that isn't the case. But, you know, that's the only way we can we can feel OK about destroying somebody on a tiny sliver of evidence. It does seem as well, like you say, a pretense, like a kind of pose, like a kind of dance, like a kind of willful. Mm. No, there is no complexity. People like, and do you think there's something about that mm. space that affords us the... That or uh, exacerbates this tendency to make these kind of judgments. That it's a it, we're dealing with human beings, but in a, a, a an essentially inhuman way because none of the cues and connections that we are designed to have are present in these. Like I think mm. if I was dealing with the lady that like wrote the AIDS tweet and then found she'd lost her job at the end of it, I feel like I'd might have gone. Oh, what did you? Uh, if we were face to face in a little group, mm. I, I, we'd probably all work that out. 
yes, among yeah, exactly. ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks for watching this podcast and going all the way to the end of it. Would you be so kind as to click the bell? It might not be there, but over there. And uh, subscribing so that we can infiltrate your serenity and peace of mind with jangling bells and buzzes. Thank you.